that a newborn Savior is coming. Go on. Say this word. Pray. Scripture. Amen. This morning our scripture is coming from Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time, from that time forward, even well, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. I read Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, which are in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we come right now. Yes, God. Call on your holy and precious name. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Father, we come right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father God, we come to you. Yes, yes. For everything that you have done. Oh, Lord. Father God, you've been so good to us, Father. You've been better to us. We've been to us. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, you took care of us out there, Father. Yes, God. You made them be Thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Father. Yes, Father, we know we couldn't be like so many of them. We couldn't be there ain't no But you know the name of the office takes a lot. You stood by and you protected us. You took care of that we grabbed it. Thank you, Father. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the food we had on the table, Father. Father, we had our help us spread. Father, we look around on all our family. Father, we lift them up to you right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Father God, heal those that are sick, those that are stricken, all manner of diseases, those men in accident, those men hurt. Yes, Lord. Father God, those men that don't know you and free from all of their sins. Father God, we pray for our leaders, this nation, we pray for our soldiers, fighting in the war. We pray for those that come on this known prison. Father God, we know that we just hold on to that chain of hand. Everything gonna be all right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father God, yes. those who are bereaved this morning, Father. Father, we ask that you would heal that broken heart. Yes. Father, we know that we all got to go one day. Father, help us to be ready when that time comes. Yes, Father. Father. Father, right now, we ask you to bless every church that we can be open in our name today, Father. Let your word go forth, Father. Yes, Let the preachers that I'm teaching, Father, someone come right and say, I want to be saved. Yes. Father God, we know, Jesus, that you is the reason for the sin. Yes, God. Father God, so many is going about Jesus. Yes. Yes. Going about doing things wrong, Father. Father, they don't remember what the reason for the season is, Father. Father God, we know it's you, Father. Yes, God. Yes. That's why we lift up your holy yes, God. Father. Yes. Father God, yes. we know, Jesus, that you died for us all. Father. Yes, God. Thank you. Father God, we are going to say thank you. Thank you, God. Father God, we ask you to bless our pastor and his family. Yes, Father God, when it's all said and done, Father God, we ask you to bless our church. Yes, Father God, we ask you to bless our church. Father God, when it's all said and done, Father God, when we can't do it no more. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we ask you to give us a word. Yes, yes, yes. Father God, we ask you to give us a word. Yes, yes, yes. Father God, we ask you to give us a word. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Oh, oh what a night. Solid night. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to him hands up. Amen. 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 Give him a hug. something we ought to give God thanks. We ought to give God thanks. Amen.
holding to God's understanding. Hey, hey, man. Sometimes man will let you down. All right. But I got news for you. God will never, ever Amen. let you down. Amen. Amen. So we can praise God this morning and thank God for all that he's done and for all that he's doing in and through our lives. Even though when it looked like it's not working out for our good, mm. I promise you, God is making it all work together yes. for the good of those who love him and those that are called according to his purpose. Amen. So let us get ready right now to listen up for our announcements this morning from Sister Mitchell. Uh, let's, let us get ready to uh, listen up for our announcements this morning from Sister Mitchell. Amen. Amen. I want to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, to our visitors, we want to say thank you for joining us. Anytime you are in this area, please feel free to stop by and to worship with us. Amen. And to the ones that's listening online, we also want to say good morning. Amen. Um, to our visitors, yes. loved ones, anyone that's online, we want to say good morning to you. Amen. Um, our weekly um, announcements, please not let's not us forget Bible study each Wednesday beginning at 6 p.m. And you know today is second Sunday, so we're just having 9 a.m. service only. The Nativity, December the 18th, starting at 3 p.m., will be held at the Genesis City Hall. The ticket information, children 5 through 11, it is $10. Ages 12 and up is 20, and it will be $25 at the door. Please see Pastor Nix if you would like to have a ticket. Also, you can contact Brandon Simon, Sister Brenda Reed, and Sister May Carrie Carol Sims. Um, our birthday celebration this month, we only have two, which will be Victoria Wright. Her birthday will be on the 21st. Amen. And Benny Nix Sr., his birthday will be on the 27th. Amen. So let's please make sure that we reach out to them on their birthdays. Um, we can send a card Amen. or just a simple phone call. Amen. Um, I sit with Shane. Brother Michael, Mikey Gentry, that is Mr. Paul McKenzie's brother. Let's please continue to lift him up. Pastor Irvin Williams, he is um, in the hospital still. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Matthew Harvell, he is still in the hospital. Sister Nani Faye Nix, she is at Diversa Care in Cooper. She's in room 38B. Mm -hmm. Sister Leanna Worthy, she is home. Uh, Sister Georgia Campbell is home, mm -hmm. and Sister Rosalie Thomas, that is Miss Martha Campbell's mother, Deacon Lane Worthy is home, and uh, Sister Betty Nunn, she is still at the Hatless Nursing Home. Mm -hmm. Continue healing and strength, Deacon Sam Reed, Sister Joyce Nix, Sister Clemmy Nix, Brother Sean Worthy, Sister Brenda Silman, Sister May Lois Morrow, Deacon Jimmy Worthy, mm -hmm. Sister Martha Campbell, and Brother Billy Nix. Mm -hmm. Let's also remember all others that are sick and shut in and bereaved families, those in jail and prison, all healthcare workers and caregivers, our town, this state, this nation, and its leaders, all our college students. Um, I think our college students is coming home or is home, so let's continue to um, you know, keep them lifted up. Um, we know how it is when you come home, we hear about so much Amen. that goes on. So let's please we make sure we are keeping our college students lifted up, praying up. Uh, our bereavement family is Sister Gladys Harvey. Let's please remember uh, her family and Sister Irene Davis, the Davis and Nick's family, let's please continue to pray for their family for strength. And let's just pray for our loved ones through this holiday season. Amen. Um, Amen. It, is, it, it is very, very hard um, during this time. You know, losing loved ones or just not be able to spend the time with them during this time. So let's please continue to, you know, lift up our elders during this time, um, during the holiday Amen. season, because I don't from experience that I've had this week, it is hard. So let's please continue to lift up our elderly. Please, please, let's continue to pray for them. And these are your announcements on today. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Sister Mitchell, for our announcements. If you have noted the announcement, she did not announce we were going to Chalo. So Chalo has been uh, canceled for right now. Pastor Williams is kind of under the weather, so uh, you have the rest of the day kind of uh, at your liberty. I pray that you would use it in a good way to go and visit some of our sick and sick and just lift them up before the Lord, let them know that you're thinking about them, go by and see them, visit them, um, give them a phone call, whatever you need to do to lift their spirits, please do so. Uh, please, let's remember the flu is going around, so y'all, let's please make certain that we wash our hands, and if you don't feel good, if you don't feel good, stay at home, okay? okay? I'm going to give you some advice. If you don't feel good, stay home, amen. We don't need, we don't need everybody getting sick. That's right. You trying to come to church. You can watch us online and enjoy the service the same way. We just praise God for those that press their way out this morning. Then kind of foggy and wet and dreary. You know, it's a sleepy in morning if you're at hell. And you'll get that spirit of sleepiness on you. And you'll pull the cover over you one more time. Amen, amen. Didn't that have done that? You know, I, just, I started going back to work. And I'm telling you, there was a day I had cover. Just, 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 just no I but we just praise God this morning for life and health and strength. Uh, please, when you get an opportunity, go by and visit our city, please. Uh, we, we was doing our, our visitation last week for the Lord's Supper, and they always ask them about the church. And it's you that they would like to see. Amen. They can log in and see us kind of going around. But what, what a joy it would be to them if we just dropped by right. to see how they're doing. Amen. Amen. So let us get ready at this time for our tithes and offers. One thing is for sure that I know for a fact. I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I'm not telling you what I read in the paper or in the book. But you can't beat God's gift. No matter how hard you try one thing God is faithful about, he's faithful to that that he promised. He said, if you will sow into the kingdom, in other words, if you'll bring food into my house, if you'll put bread in my house, I'll make sure that there's meat in your house. Amen. So let us get ready to come this morning with tithes and with offering this morning as I was leaving from Paradise. Let us not forget all those who sacrifice for everything that we've got. Amen. So let us come up this morning and give it.
opportunity to give. I pray that you gave according to your heart. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we truly thank you for the privilege to give back into your service, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that everyone that has partaken of this opportunity to give unto your work, Lord God, that you would bless them according to your word. Yes. Psalm 40, 50, 60, 100 fold, Lord God. You said it would come back to us. You didn't say when, Lord, but you made a promise that it was going to come back, press down, running together, Lord God, like we've never seen it before. And Lord, I'm a witness that you can do with it more than we can do with it, Lord God. So Lord, we thank you for the privilege to give unto your work. We thank you for every giver. We thank you for everyone that had desire to give and just didn't have it, Lord God. So Lord, Bless them for their willing spirit yes. to bless you. Yes. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for your gift. In Jesus' name we do pray. And the saints say, Amen. 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 We're going to ask that Sister Tina come at this time and give us a song of praise. And then the next voice you will be hearing will be not known that our own minister, Jasmine Clay. Amen. So give him a hand as we get ready to come. We just thank God for the privilege for those that speak the word of God. And we pray that it will fall on fertile ground today. And we pray that it will be words that will change your entire life. And especially this coming week. Because you know something, we need a word. Amen. We need a word from heaven. Come on, sister. Tell me.
Amen. Is there anybody in the house this morning that want to be what God is? Amen. Amen. We're not going to prolong the time. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew, the 15th chapter. And we're going to begin at the 21st verse. Why are you getting it there? I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say Lord, help me. 
But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Good God Almighty. Come on, let's give God some praise for his word. Amen. 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 Truly, we thank God for our being here today. Father God, now in the name of Jesus, as we stand, as I stand, God, I ask that you would speak. That your word will fall on fertile ground, Father God, and we will leave these four walls and go out and tell a dying world that you are still God and that you are still in charge and you are still in the miracle working business. And God, right now, we ask that you would speak to you, your people, Father God, the ones that are present and the ones that are online, Father God. God, we thank you. God, we honor you right now. God, we praise you. God, we lift you up, God. God, there is no other God but you, God. You are our God. And God, we thank you for your word right now, God. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 If you would, uh, for a short period of time, for a subject today, we're going to use, I'll say yes. Amen. Amen. I'll say yes. And for a sub thought, we're going to use change me. Amen. Amen. We're going to say, I'll say yes. But God, I also want you to change me. Amen. Here it is. If you're looking at the word of God, you will find out that uh, Jesus had been, if you read up a little further, Jesus had been dealing with some Pharisees. And they, be, they, they wanted to be argumentative, you know. And Jesus had somewhat grown tired of that. So he left what he was in Galilee. And he went to the other side of Tyre and Sidon. And that's what the Bible says. Amen. It says, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Let me give you just a little bit of history of Tyre and Sidon. This area that Jesus went to was a Gentile area. Gentile, meaning that Jesus had already said what we read in the text that he had came to his father's house. Amen. He came to deal with his father's children. And if you know that you are Gentile, you are not of the house of Israel. So a lot of people would say that Jesus had no business going where he went. Amen. Certain people would say that Jesus had no obligation of going to Tyree and Sidon at the time that he went. In his day and time, Jews and Gentiles didn't fool with each other. Amen, somebody. I want y'all to come and go with me. If you look in today's time, there's a certain people that we just don't fool with. So when we go around where those people are at that we just don't fool with, other people looking on but think something is wrong with you. You have absolutely lost your mind. Why in the world are we going over there? And here it is just a little more to back it up. If you go to Genesis, the ninth chapter, the Bible tells you the long history about Tyre and Sodom. I ask that you will go back and if you, you will read that in your time. But here it is there in Tyre and Sodom and over there the Gentiles have their own God. They have their own God by the name of Baal. And for you who don't know who Baal is, Baal is the God of fertility, as they say. He was the prince of the earth. And here it is, you have a Phoenician city with a Gentile woman, woman from Canaan calling on Jesus. Now, one would also stop and ask, why in the world, if you have your own God, are you calling on another God to fix the problem that you have in your house? 
Tell me why the God that you serve can't handle what's going on in your house. Now here it is. Jesus didn't have no really have no real obligation of going to Tyre Tyre and Sidon. And, and behold, a woman of Canaan came from her region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Let me tell you something. When there is a need, God will break tradition in order to get you because no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, you need to know and understand that God loves you. Amen, somebody. So Jesus leaves and goes to a place where he had no obligation. He had no, 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 no audacity to be a, a Gentile with them. But Jesus leaves tradition in order to make a transition. Amen. Somebody should have shouted right there. Only because that if you, when you think about it, Jesus left where he was. And he came into a dying world to make transition so we could be reconnected back to the Father. Jesus is the type of God that does not do things in our tradition, but he follows his order. We have traditions, but God has an order. And anytime our, our traditions conflict with God's order, God knows just what to do in order to wake you up. The woman, then he is approached by the Canaanite woman. First, we ought to realize that she had to be paying attention to her child. Her daughter, she had to be paying attention to her daughter to know and understand that there was a foreign identity in her daughter. Mothers. A lot of people think that this is a Mother's Day uh, uh, sermon. No, it's not. It's God's word and it helps on Mother's Day and every other day of the week. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But here it is. This mother knew that there was a foreign identity in her daughter. How did she know that? Because parents, whether you're a mother or a father, you pay when you love your children, you pay attention to your children. You pay attention to their habits. You pay attention to the people they hang around. You pay attention to everything that involves them, especially when they're under your roof and in your care. You pay attention to your child. She paid attention to her child well enough to know that there was something going on with her. How many of you know that when a foreign presence, a demonic presence, threatens your home, we go into a defense mode? Anytime something you are protecting your young, anytime something comes up, uh, uh, up on them, you go into a defense mode. You, you do things that you normally wouldn't do. Uh, uh, you yell, you cry, you boast yourself to let whatever the, 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 the force that's coming against you, you let them know that they're not welcome here. You let them know that they can't live here. How do you know that one second is too long to deal with a demonic spirit? A lot of people might look at this scripture and say, well, how long has she, I don't care how long she was dealing with a demonic spirit. We need to know and identify that there was a demonic spirit in her house, and she realized at that particular moment that she wasn't going to be able to stay there with that demonic spirit. It had to go. A lot of times we deal with demonic spirits and we don't deal with them the right way. We always try to deal with them with what mama said and what daddy said and how they dealt with their demons. Everybody's demon is not alike. Yes. Amen. Oh my God. You got to get it out. We know and understand we cannot live peacefully at home with the devil. This lady worshipped Baal but came to Jesus. About her devil. <laughs> Why didn't you take that demon to your God? How did you know where Jesus was at? Why did you call him Lord if uh, if he isn't your God? She also calls him son of David. It's like that in the text. If you ain't scribbled it out, he said, "Have mercy on me, O, o Lord, son of David." And he, the, the, the actual, how could you call him son of David? That's a Jewish meaning, meaning Messiah. 
being who she was, she really wasn't permitted to use that term in calling Jesus son of David. When you was a Gentile dealing with a Jew, you didn't use that language with a Jew. Amen. That was being offensive. Amen. Because they already knew that you had another God. So why in fact are you calling on our God? Here it is. Let me break it down to you real quick. First, she knew his presence. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. How did she know his presence? She knew his presence. She knew where he was at. She knew his power. <laughs> she also knew his position. How did you know so much about the Savior before you even met him? A lot of times you heard it before that we, we talk lip a lot. We got a lot of we got a lot of lip service. But where is our heart? How did you know so much about the Savior before you met him? She knew about Jesus before she met him, but it took a devil to bring her to Jesus. Hey. How many of you know that sometimes God can't really get your attention or deal with you until all hell break loose in your house? Until all hell break loose on your job? Until all hell break loose in your children? Until all hell break loose with your friends, with your family? Sometimes God really can't get your attention until a little bit of hell begin to break loose in your life. But here it is. She knew Jesus before she met him. But it took a devil to bring her to Jesus. Don't they sound like us? God really can't get your attention until you get desperate. <laughs> Has anybody here ever been desperate for God to pay attention to your request? There's somebody in this house just this morning or even online. You have been praying to God about a request and you want it to come to pass. And it seems like the more you pray, the longer he waits. The more you pray, you don't get an answer. The more you pray, the more hell that shows up. The more you pray, everybody look like they're going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It pushes you to be in a desperate state. Yes, yes. Yes, hey, lady, why can't you go to your God and let him handle your devil? If she knew about the devil, she had to know about God. Because if you read the word of God, the devil is not associated with Baal. <laughs> so if she had a conscience of the devil, she had a conscience of God. Hey, you know something? It's, it, 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 it's strange that people that don't want heaven can't stay in hell. Hmm, come on, somebody. How is it that you don't want to come to church, but you don't want to deal with the devil when he attacks? Isn't it good that God has a design for you in difficult times, whether you be Jew or whether you be Gentile? Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Please don't find it strange when God sends transportation to you to get you to him. Yeah. Only later to find out the devil was the driver. <laughs> hey, sometimes God, got to, God will hire the devil in order to push you to get to him. Amen. God will hire the devil to mess with somebody in your family to get you to wake up. It's not because he's trying to mess with you, but he's trying to stretch your faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. God is not the type of God that do what you want him to do, when you want him to do it, how you want him to do it. Because most of the time, if you realize that if God done the things that we requested of him, as soon as we asked for it, we wouldn't change. Say yeah. 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 Yes. We're talking about a change here. Mm -hmm. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. The God that you put in place cannot handle the devil invading your space. If you got something in the place of God, when the devil shows up, there is nothing that you put in the place of God that can take care of the demonic spirit that is going on in your house, in your life, on your job, going up and down the road. There is nothing you can do about it if you don't have God where he's supposed to be. She came and she pleaded for mercy. Not for her, but for her dog. God will allow the devil to attack you in such ways that you will call on him for everybody. Have you heard somebody? Have you looked at the news lately? Have you looked at the news lately? 
you been on your job lately that having to hear conversations of things that's going on in people's lives and you're wondering how you make it to work day after day, hour after hour because God is keeping your mind. Everybody don't serve the same God that you serve. Everybody don't respect him the way that you respect him. Amen. We don't know what kind of danger we are in on our way to work while we are at work and on our way back home from work. Not only you, but what are, we, what are your kids going through? Husband and wives, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, children. You don't know the danger we face every day, but because we got a loving God, they got it all wrapped all around. They mess all right. Somebody said, God took care of me. Not only did he take care, but he's still taking care of me. Ooh, God, my. God caused an issue with the daughter so the mother could be delivered. Sometimes God will cause us to go through things because that's something that he wants us to be delivered from. I don't know about nobody else in this house right now today, but I can be honest and say there are some things that I need God to deliver me from. Is there anybody else here? Y'all got kind of quiet then. Is there anybody in here that need to be delivered from some things? Oh, y'all, come on, somebody. I ain't been saved all my life. Amen. There are things that we need God to deliver us from. And this mother came to Jesus crying for mercy for her daughter, but at the same token, God knew that it was really her that needed to help and not the daughter. Because God had already realized that if I help the mother, then I help the daughter. And if I help the daughter, then I'm helping her children and her children's children and her children's children. I just don't want to raise, get the, the, the demon out of your daughter, but I want to get the demon out of you too. God will, God will delay only to develop. If you read the word of God right here, uh, I believe it's in verse, let's find it here. He said, uh, the word of God in 23 said, but he answered her not a word. Now, come on. You call him out to the Savior. And he ain't saying nothing. Now, parents, I know I got a lot of parents in here. I want you to put in your mind that something is wrong with your child. And this is the only way that you can get help for your child. Can you imagine the anguish, the disappointment, the anger, the desperateness for him to answer? And she didn't get an answer. Sometimes you have been praying and asking God for an answer and you didn't get an answer. At that point, can I help you? Don't quit. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Don't quit. Amen. One of the biggest problems that we have, one of the biggest problems that I've had in my life is that I keep quitting. Amen. I keep Quitting, you might not understand. You probably ain't never quit on God before. I have, okay? Let me just be honest. I have quit before. Yeah. Amen. But we got to quit quitting Amen. when the going gets tough. Right. We got to quit quitting when it don't look like it used to look. Right. You got to quit quitting when it ain't going your way. Right. You got to quit quitting when everybody looking to everybody else but God. You got to quit, quit. If somebody want to give up, you let them give up. But you hang in there. I heard somebody say that if, if the rope is about to break, they need you to reach beyond the break. We're not reaching, we're giving up. All because everybody else ain't doing. But what are you doing? Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. Right here in 23, he says, uh, but he answered not a word. He didn't answer, y'all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away. Some of my readers says the disciples were saying, send her away because answer her request and get her gone because she's hollering too much. Some would say, 
sitting there away because she crying out to us. Ain't it something she need Jesus, but they make it seem like she crying out to them? <laughs> hey, ain't it like that us today? We need God, but we crying out to everybody else but God. We will give our soul to everybody else but God. We'll go to everybody else that's handing out everything and anything but God. And here it is, God has said, I'm standing here with arms wide open. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. And here it is, it says, right here in 23, it says that they wanted to send her away, for she cries after us. <laughs> First of all, she done came and she cried to a Savior yes. that ain't even hers. Amen? Amen? She knows this is the only way for her daughter to get healed. And she's talking to the Savior. She came the right way. That's right. That's she did the right things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he answered her not a word. Yeah. On top of that, she get opposition for the folks in the church. <laughs> the people walking with Jesus so selfish, they don't even want her to get here either. Hey, hey man, sit her no way. Have you ever been somewhere somebody was just crying out, just crying, 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 and, and, and it was getting on your nerves just so bad you were just like, hey, just get up away from here. Yeah. Get up away from me. Yeah. Do something with her because she's beginning to get on my nerves. It, yeah. How many of you know that when you really need something from God, you holler out with a boast that you don't care who's around, who's listening, what's going on? Because I heard somebody say when you really need some help, you don't care who knows, you don't care what they got to say, you don't care what they look like, you don't care what's going on. All you know is I need some help. That's just like calling 911 and telling them, hey, I need some paramedics, but I want them to be black, uh, uh, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized before he get here. No, you can't do that. When you need some help, you don't care where it come from. You don't care where it come from because being a child of God, you already know in the word, it says that all of my help. Good God. All of my help come from the Lord. Is there anybody in here that know that all of your help come from God? He might have used mama. He might have used daddy. He might have used anybody. But I know that ultimately it came from God. Yes. We get more opposition from people in the church than we do from Jesus. I was watching a movie one day, and there was a man, he was a preacher, and something happened, he messed up, and people just gave up on him. And some people showed up and said, hey man, why you don't preach no more? He said, I do preach. He said, I just don't preach at the church. And they said, why do you not preach at the church? He said, because God forgave me, they did we can't be like that. If you just look over your life and see how many times you disappointed God. And just because somebody else shame is showing up at that particular time, you have no right to put your mouth on nobody. Because the same God that saved you is the same God that can save them. The same God that delivered you is the same God that can deliver them. You have no right to speak out about somebody else's situation when God had to help you out of a few situations and a few circumstances in your life. The best thing that you could do for anybody if they're going through is open your mouth up to God and holler out and say, God, not only do I need you, but I got some family members that need you, God. I'm standing in the need of prayer, but I got some folks in my family that's also standing in the need of prayer. God, I'm standing right now, I'm standing in the gap because God, ultimately, we need you. I don't say it all of that and he still ain't spoken word. What do I do? Don't quit. She faced all that opposition but she didn't quit. So here it is. At first she cried out. I'm almost done. Y'all get about five more minutes. Here it is. First of all she cried out. She cried out. Then if you read further in the text it says she cries. Cried means past tense. 
But now that she's she it's cries, that means it's presence. That means that it's non-stopping. She continues to cry, 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 hollering out, cry, 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 cry. Hey, 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 Jesus, you got to do something with the Canaanite lady, cause she she crying, she bringing attention to us that we don't want. God, you got to do something with her. So he answered and said, "It was not not sent. He was not sent." Except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. My Lord, my Lord. That wasn't her God. She went to Jesus and she called on him. And here he is, Jesus is saying, Look, there was an order to things. That's right. That's right. That's right. There was a divine order that was set in place before you was even born. Before he broke the foundations of the world, there was an order set in place. And Jesus was letting her know right then and there, I can't break this order. That my father in heaven put in place. So I can't give what he gave me and give it to the dogs. I can't take my pearls and cast them to the swine and let them be trampled over. Just for me to be mauled at the end of the situation. I cannot do that. I was sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But hey, she ain't giving up. Can't you see her running around but say, hey, hey, hey now, I hear what you're saying. This is a, this is a turning point right here. Look at it, this is a turning point right here. Then she came and worshipped. She worshipped somebody that she, 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 that wasn't her God, it wasn't her Savior, he wasn't her Messiah, but she came around after he told her, hey, look, I can't do nothing for you. Can you imagine going to the doctor and the doctor saying, I can't do nothing for you. And in your mind, you say, hey, it's, it's got to be something that you can do. And here it is, uh, uh, here it is, uh, uh, then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Now, whoo, good God Almighty. At first, she came to Jesus and said, I need you to help my dog. But now she's getting to the realization that my daughter just ain't the one that needs help. I need help, too. So, Lord, instead of me calling for help for my daughter, how about you help me so I can continue to help my dog? Yeah. Help me. Yes, sir. Yeah, Lord. I already told you earlier that if Jesus had went on and done what she wanted him to do when she wanted him to do it, she very well could have went back home and still worshiped Baal. Yeah, but God had to deliver her thinking yeah. and develop her faith. Yeah. She kept pushing even though he kept denying what she wanted. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Here it is. It said then she came in and worshiped. So now she got the right posture. Good God Almighty. But he answered and said, It is not good. Yeah. Woo. Good God Almighty. It is not good to take the children's bread yeah. and throw it to the little dogs. Now, good God Almighty. Right. Jesus, so a lot of people might think that he was being harsh <laughs> when he said, He's talking to a female, and then he called her a dog. In our day and time, we got another word for that. But in Jesus' day and time, because she was a Gentile and he was a Jew, the Jewish people saw the Canaanites as being dogs. Amen? So he used that derogatory term in order to let her know that basically when it comes to the house of God, you ain't no other dog. Good God Almighty. Can you imagine that lady being called a dog in front of folks? Anybody else in here being called a dog? You be ready to take off your shoe, pull off your heel, and bowl up, and I'm talking about you be ready to fight. But Jesus told her, he said, look, I can't get a bread and throw it to the little dog. And look, she came back around on the other side. When she came back around on the other side, she said, hey, 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 look, uh, Jesus. And she said, yes, Lord. Ultimately, when I used to read this scripture, I was only looking for the miracle of healing of the dog. But now I see the real miracle when the mother got delivered. All Jesus was looking for was a yes. Amen. All this time she was fighting, uh, uh, getting an answer from Jesus, then fighting with the disciples only to get a yes from Jesus. But she didn't know that Jesus was really trying to get a yes from her. Like I ain't preaching. 
my pastor do though. He got standing up down here trying to tell you, hey, here it is. He said, uh, uh, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Ooh, good God Almighty, this woman has some faith that he could do what she heard he could do. She had some faith to know that he was going to do give her request as long as she gave him a yes. Good. Where are you in your life? Are you giving God a yes? Right where you are in your difficult time, are you giving God a yes? Even though it don't look right, it don't look nice, it's not what you set up, it's not what you planned, it's not what you orchestrated, are you still giving God a yes? In your faithfulness, are you still giving God a yes? Being faithful to God is not just hanging in there when the road gets tough. It's being faithful with God. Because when you can be faithful with God, come rain, however, hell, or snow, no matter what people say, no matter if they stay, no matter if they go, you know and understand without a shadow of a doubt that God got you. Yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah. I'm almost done. I'm just going 28, y'all. She said, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Even though he made it seem like she was outside the house, she put herself in the house. Hey, 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 come on, somebody. She said, Hey, I ain't got to be at the table. Come on, somebody. A lot of us want to be at the table, a lot of us want to get the big head and be seen and stuff. That ain't the, that ain't the point. That is not the point of the issue of the matter. She said, look, I ain't even got to be at the table, but as long as I'm in the house, because in order to catch the crumbs that fall from the table, you got to be well. And she said, as long as I'm in the house, I know that you got more than enough food that when they get to eat, I'm still going to get some. I'm still going to get what I need. Why? Because at that point, she realized that he got more than enough power just for the folks at the table. Jesus, hey, I don't got to be at the table, God. I just want to be in the house, God. Let me be in the house, God. Because the crumbs that fall from the table, I'll be satisfied with that. The dogs got happy because they knew that when the people was eating, there was still going to be some scrap left for them to eat. I don't care if I don't get the full plate. As long as I get enough for God to handle my situation, to take care of my problem, to help me out, to touch my children, to bring them out, I am okay with just being the dog, but I'm in the house and I'm still eating. And Jesus said, he said, you know what? You know what, later? Hey, he, this is what he said right here. In the 20th, he said, it said Jesus and, and, and said to her, oh woman. Hey, her name didn't even matter. Hey, we so big on names and stuff. The name didn't matter. The name didn't matter. That's why we got to stop doing making it seem like the church is a country club. You got to have a certain name and pay a certain amount of money to get love and peace and understanding and salvation from God. But God's house is not a country club. God's house is a hospital for us to come and get rejuvenated so we can go out to a down world and tell them, hey, there is life at the end of the tunnel. No matter what you're going through, you can still make it. Here it is. He said, great is your faith. Let it be unto you as you desire. And her daughter was here from that very hour. Here it is. God is telling you right now. Look, I, I, I understand that you got something going on and you think that what's going on with your child is bigger than what's really going on on the inside of you. But God said, not, I don't just want to help your daughter, but I want to help you too. Because when I help you too, you're going to help somebody else know and realize that it's not about them. It's not about what they're going through, but it's ultimately about the Christ. The living Lord, our Savior, the one that died on the old rugged cross, but on the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand, and he can do any and everything but fail. Is there anybody here that knows that the God that we serve is taking care of your problem? If they call you a dog, let them call you a dog, because you're still getting your food from the table. I don't need a full plate. Just give me the crumbs, God. I'll take the crumbs because the crumbs is fixing my problem. It's helping my situation. It, it's saving my family. Yes, God. I'm done. Yes, God. Yes, God. All right, preacher. Yes, God. All right.
God wants us to know. You ain't got to be at the table to receive the blessings that he has for you. You just need to be in the house. When people exclude you, remind them that you're in the house. I might not have as much as you have. I might not have the things that you have. I might not have the opportunities that you have. But I'm in the house. Why am I in the house? How do I know I'm in the house? Because I woke up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. I had the activities of my life. I looked around and my family was still doing fine. I could go to the wall and turn on the switch and the lights came on. Bills might be due, but God can still come through. I don't care what you're going through in your life, but you need to know that God is on your side and he's fighting for you. You need to know and understand that the God that you serve, he won't give up on you, so don't give up on him. You got to stop quitting when the road gets rough and the road gets tough. You got to hang on in there. If your husband don't act right, you act right. If your children don't want it, oh. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. Hey, Jesus Christ, he came, he came. He came that we, being Gentiles, can be included in the house. And to remind us that we ain't even got to be at the table in order to receive the blessings that he has for us. He came, he lived, he performed miracle after miracle. And the same people that he worked the miracles for were the ones that put him on the cross. The ones that walked with him even denied him. But it didn't stop him. He, when he prayed in the garden, he said, God, not mine, but your will be done. He went to the cross. He died. They nailed him. They pierced him. They thawed him. Hey. But he didn't stop there because he knew that there were some Gentiles that needed to be included in the house. He died. But he got up early Sunday morning with all power in his hand. I don't care what time he got up. I don't care what happened when he got up. All I know is that he got up. And not only did he get up, but he got up in me. And truth be told, he got up in you. And that's why we are able to stand here today to go out and tell a dying world that no matter what it is, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, you can make it. All God wants from you is a yes. When you give him a yes, he'll change you. You might not change as fast as people think you ought to change. But God will change you on his timing because he's the God of time. The God that we serve is the only God that can show up late and still be on time. Come on, somebody. All God wants is a yes. Whether you're here or whether you're online, all God wants is a yes from you. Right there where you are, the situation, the circumstance, all he wants is a yes from you. Give God a yes and watch him change you. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Doors of the church is open. Where may be one? Doors of the church is open. Where may be one? I'll say yes. I'll say yeah, God is standing with all the wide open, waiting on you to say yeah. Will that be one? You may have been lifting somebody else up, but God was all the time trying to get you to the cross. Amen. Will you say yes this morning? Will that be one? I know it's early in the morning, but you can still say yes. Amen. Let's give God a hand.
word to prayer? Yeah. I'll say yes. You know, sometimes that's all God is looking for is for a willing to use. And he's just looking 